welcome to this very special series of episodes called Eco Yogis Conversations on Healing the Environment from the Soul. I am Ananya, the youth representative of the Brahma Kumaris Environment Initiative in Australia, special interest group. And today we have a very special guest with us all the way from Denmark, Sonia Olsen. Welcome, sister. Thank you. Thank you. So we learn a little bit about this very special story. Sonia has been instrumental in starting the Brahma Kumaris Environment Initiative in 2009. She has attended numerous climate change conferences from the United Nations and she travels all over the world to spread awareness about the environment. So as most of our listeners know that Brahma Kumaris we practice special form of meditation and lifestyle. So my first question to you would be that how did you come across Brahma Kumaris and what made you take up this meditation practice and this lifestyle? So I'd just like our listeners to listen a bit on your story. So uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, interview. And I really like the title, The Echo Yogis. And as you said, I came to Brahma Kumaris 35 years ago, and I was 24 years at that time. And I lived in London, and I had become vegetarian. And there wasn't so many vegetarian opportunities in Scandinavia at that time, in the 80s. So I found a really good job in a whole food shop in London. And there I came in contact through the manager with uh, Brahma Kumaris and the Raj Yoga meditation. And I liked it a lot because uh, it was an active form for meditation. So I could still keep thinking and I could be active in helping other people to learn meditation. And uh, I always wanted to make a difference in one way or another. So I studied to become a nurse, first of all, in order to help other people. And when I came to Brahma Kumaris, they said, you've got to help yourself first. And that intrigued me. It fascinated this concept. So, um, and I had good meditation experiences. So I, I uh, kept practicing this. And now so many years has passed. And it's a really lovely way of living. Wow, that's wonderful. So you've been practicing for 35 years. Yeah, yeah. And, and this movement started in 2009 and you were the founder of this movement. So can you tell us a little bit about this environment initiative and what's the purpose behind this initiative? Yeah, what you call the movement that started in 2009, you mean our environment initiative. Brahma Kumari started a long way back in 36. So in 2009, there was a big climate change conference in Copenhagen. They were going to renew the protocol, the Kyoto Protocol. So there was a lot of media focus on this UN climate change conference called COP15. And we read about it in the newspapers some year before the conference was going to come. And I thought, wow, Brahma Kumaris, we could actually contribute here by bringing focus on the aspect of consciousness and awareness and uh, so we got a group of BKs from Europe together and we formed Brahma Kumaris Environment Initiative. And we coined the, our overall umbrella theme for the conferences, which is consciousness and climate change. But of course, we were very well aware of that we can't just participate in conferences and advocate our message there, we also have to bring about a greater environmental awareness in our own community. So uh, that's why our initiative has a twofold purpose. 
to 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 participate and actively engaged in the local community and in the UN conferences to bring more focus on awareness, on values, on meditation, but also, to, of course, to bring greater environmental awareness to our own community and our own people. That's lovely. That's really lovely. Um, mm -hmm. How this has a twofold purpose for the mm -hmm. people within the organization and also outside. So it's mm -hmm. very evident that you are very passionate about the environment. But was it, what is it that you really love about the environment and why? Well, I think in a way, uh, most people love nature, isn't it? You meet very few people who wouldn't be passionate about nature. Um, so I think I'm just like anybody else in that sense. But uh, I was brought up on the countryside. My dad is a farmer from Sweden. So, I mean, I, I spent my childhood days in the Swedish forest. And maybe people have different reasons why they love nature. And we can see here during the pandemic that many people have spent more time in nature because there hasn't been so much else to do. Mm. And uh, it has, can play a very important role in coming close to oneself. And for some people, if you believe in God, some people feel closer to God when they're in nature. Mm. And for myself, I feel connected to, to the earth, to the world around me when I'm in nature. It kind of grounds me. In this very digital world, uh, to come out to nature, it's very refreshing. And it also helps me to appreciate the wonder of the moment. You know, everything, every moment in itself has a sense of wonder in it. Mm -hmm. And nature reminds me of that. And it also reminds me of the life cycle of life, in a sense, creation, renewal, and everything goes in cycles. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's beautiful. So it reminds me of the beauty of everything. Mm -hmm. Today, there is research going on to kids who lack spending time in nature. Mm -hmm. And they call it nature deficiency disorder, nature deficit disorder. So it can have some psychological hang-ups if we don't spend time in nature as kids. Yes, to, <laughs> to make yes. sure everyone gets out there. Yes, and it's, it's really lovely that you shared that you were from the countryside and you had that seed in you from the very beginning. And mm -hmm. that is that, you know, you feel connectedness and everything refreshing. So mm -hmm. earlier you mentioned that when you came to the Brahma Kumaris, this meditation practice, you were told that um, first heal yourself. And that is the meditation we do. But sometimes people really ask that how can a meditation group actually have something to do with the environment or do anything to contribute towards environmental health, a better health? So mm -hmm. what do you think on that? Well, any individual can make a big difference, even they, if they belong to a group or not. And the biggest impact one individual can have in terms of the climate change is to become vegetarian or even better, to become vegan. Mm -hmm. And as Brahma Kumaris is a vegetarian or vegan community um, already, we have a great impact in that way. And as any individual, uh, we can also have a big influence where every time I spend a, a penny Every time I spend a penny, I have to make a choice. Am I going to buy sustainable or not? Am I going to consider nature when I spend money or not? So as we are a meditation group and meditation focused on inner contentment, we often find that our need for shopping and buying is reduced. So in this spiritual lifestyle with inner contentment as focus, I reduce my need. And that will, of course, serve nature. 
And if the whole worldwide community is doing this, it has a big impact. One speciality of the BKs is our huge network. Uh, yeah. BKs has been having programs and surveys for over 80 years. So if the Brahma Kumaris can also influence their network, contacts and friends for a greater environmental awareness, then of course we are looking at a huge impact. Mm. But it comes back in one way or another to the basic fact that when I have a clean or loving thought, I send that energy out to my immediate world. And when I have a waste thought or negative thought, I'm polluting my environment. <laughs> and this practice, everyone can practice. Yeah. It's wonderful, the practical tips that you shared around vegetarianism and mm -hmm. you know, polluting mm -hmm. the environment less and also taking responsibility of our own thoughts. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to ask you, and our listeners would be very interested in this, that what is something till date that you are very proud of, that a project or anything that you've done in this environment initiative that has brought a change? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a very good question, and I was thinking about it. <clears throat> and if you look at our own community, I'm very proud of like you sitting here belonging to the youth group in Australia. And in a way, environment has become the buzzword within our own community. It's talked about in the corridors, in our meeting, during coffee breaks. It has become in the forefront. Uh, in our own community and meetings. And long before Brahma Kumari started, uh, there was big focus on renewable energy and solar energy. And today Brahma Kumaris are in the forefront of all faith-based organizations in their focus and investment in solar energy. And that makes me very proud. Mm. And in terms of conferences, uh, when we started in 2009, there was big focus on the values of responsibility, care, compassion, but no one took up the aspect of awareness leading to an attitude, leading to a decision, and thereby impacting the world. But in 2015, in the big COP conference in Paris, you might know about the Paris Agreement, Sure. There, in that conference, the UNESCO, which is one of the UN bodies, it has a big pavilion in the conference. And their main theme was changing minds, not the climate. And then I thought, wow, our changing of awareness has come to the forefront of the negotiation. It is, and it has come to stay. Yes, that's, that's yeah, and lovely. we work together with other faith-based groups and uh, our voice is getting more and more recognized and more and more uh, valued. And that, of course, also makes me proud together with all the others. Mm. I think that's lovely, working on our awareness and attitude. And that's mm. the prime focus. I'd also mm. like to know, where do you think this, in, what's the future of this initiative? And where do you want to go with this? Well, we want to go towards a new harm harmonious world, isn't it? That's yes. in the eye of all of us. Mm -hmm. And I just see it growing. We get more and more invitations to be part of various uh, projects and speaking engagement. And we get more and more opportunities to work with others. So we need more people. And we need more echo yogis. Hmm. And the youth group especially is growing. And this we see very clearly all around the world. So we need more young eco yogis yeah. And of course, not to forget, I have to increase my own green angel qualities. So always not to forget, I have to step along with uh, this greater environmental awareness in the world, I have to step up my own inner qualities to keep up. Mm -hmm. I think this, whatever you're sharing is very refreshing and very 
light to know that there's so much happening for the mm-hmm. environment because mm-hmm. sometimes i meet people my own age the youth mm-hmm. and this sense of hopelessness so sometimes mm-hmm. anger and so what do you want to say to our listeners who want to do something for the environment but they they don't know what they can do or there's there's that, there's not that happiness or that hope left so what do you have to say to those listeners yeah this is a very good question and we see it more and more actually some call it grief some call it sadness some call it loss of hope and of course uh there is also anger this anger often comes from inner security inner insecurity mm-hmm. and we can counteract the anger by then increasing inner security mm-hmm. and the insecurity of course comes from seeing uh, the uncertainties about the future mm-hmm. so when i increase my inner security with meditation through focusing on the positive aspects then some of the anger will disappear mm. and regarding hope and um, then i think every one of us has to ask ourselves what brings me hope because it's very individual mm. i have asked many people what brings you hope for future some scientists said that technology is scalable so that gives him hope one of our own meditation senior uh, lecturers she said that i know i'm a soul and i'm immortal and that gives me hope mm-hmm. another friend said that dialogue and connecting with other people and to talk about things and to form groups give her hope and uh, one person said that and i think this everyone can experiment with that uh, to feel that my power of thought is actually very influential when my thoughts i can actually create the immediate world around me and have a more positive more green lens on my glasses and if i focus on kindness and being loving compassion towards myself towards others towards nature somehow the hope will grow and the small actions in life will give more meaning than before and meaning also gives hope so it's a little bit homework for everyone to find out what gives most hope to them Yeah. and there is always everything for 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 everyone so this is a little piece of work to do definitely i think i'm going to take up that what what gives me hope and mm. you said becoming friends with yourself and having love mm. and kindness for yourself and then people and then that gives hope in other people as well that yeah. that's really lovely to know Uh, it's a very good conversation to have with friends and families. Mm-hmm. That's really nice. And I just spoke about these sort of people who want to do something but feel that you know there's no hope. But mm-hmm. there is sometimes this some different people that we also come across who mm-hmm. think that there is no problem or who mm-hmm. don't seem to care. So what do you to to that or what do you have to say to that well in a way i don't think i would say anything mm. uh, i maybe would say read the newspapers or something <laughs> mm. but uh, uh i would see if there is any other way i can support that person to grow the inner capacity to see the larger perspectives in the world mm. if there is any way i can support that person to increase their own capacity for love for responsibility for compassion mm-hmm. um and then maybe focus on on good vibrations yeah. okay. mm-hmm. um i'm sure that many of our listeners would be interested in what they are hearing and we just 
you just shared some really lovely things that we've done for the environment and there there is so much happening and so if there's anyone who wants to get involved and who likes what they're hearing what do you suggest to them well because i'm from the brahma kumaris i would say you would maybe find your local center of the brahma kumaris and see if they have any environment activities you can engage in i'm sure they have we have many initiatives like 10 ways to change the world we have uh, worked together in interfaith for the environment and many things we do and if they don't have any green activities you should ask for them <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and maybe be part of be, be, be being in a group to set up a few things and uh, or just engage in the local society and see what are the environment groups doing that and find some friends and uh, engage because when we feel hopeless it's because i feel i can't do anything yeah but there is so much i can do Yeah. So uh, get on the internet and and find out. That's and very true. Pick up meditation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. All over yeah. the world, I think, and I can speak for Australia definitely that most of our centers are doing something or the other mm-hmm. for the mm-hmm. environment, and there is mm-hmm. something little big happening everywhere. Yeah. Um, Sister Sonia, I also know you personally, and I know that you love creating meditations. Yeah. and there's some beautiful meditations that i personally practice that you know help me connect with the nature and give something to the nature mm-hmm. and tomorrow is mother earth day mm-hmm. so would you like to share with us a special meditation yeah and, um, be- and before we get to that meditation do you want to share anything else yeah i would i would sh- share a challenge with you I hope all your listeners because of day is coming up so you give yourself a 7 days challenge of doing a green angel or a green meditation every day to send these loving connected vibrations to your immediate environment which is the body and then to your room your flat your city and then connect to the whole globe and to all living beings and yes spread these very peaceful loving vibrations and i'm sure you will have some wonderful results and uh, yes you mentioned earth day so there will be extra activity so that's also a very good way to engage mm-hmm. and uh, yeah nice meeting you so um uh get uh, get engaged then become a green angel of australia that's lovely i really mm. like the homework 7 day challenge so mm. let's have a beautiful meditation that takes yeah. us all beyond yes i will share screen and you can relax and sit back and this is a visual meditation so you can keep your eyes open and just enjoy settling into meditation i reflect upon humanity and all living beings as being a, a big green tree i see the vitality and the life force in this tree of life I send my thoughts deep into the roots of the tree I connect to the seed of the tree and I let my 
thoughts become as still as a seed. I stay here with my mind for a while, enjoying the quietness. As the seed of my thoughts starts to grow, I feel the responsibility of supporting the tree of life. I decide to remain a supporter of this new growing tree of life. That gave me goosebumps. It was lovely. And I'm sure that each one of our listener, viewer, would do this Green Angel meditation every day for the next seven days. Thank you so much, Sister Sonia, for sharing your story and how it all started, your vision for the future. And there was some really good homework or reflection points, like what is hope for you? So thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for coming along. And thank you so much to all of our audience. See you next week on Wednesday. Thank you. Om Shanti. Good evening. Good evening.